Hi, this is Nick Araz here with Boris Effects to give you some tips and tricks for working with Sapphire inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. We're gonna take a look at working with Builder, which is available under S Effects. You can find this in the Sapphire Builder category once you've installed Sapphire inside of Premiere Pro. I'm gonna drag S Effect onto my clip. And if I go to my effect controls, keep in mind if you're just getting used, if you want to basically be able to see some of the stuff that's available here within the Sapphire library, feel free to load a preset. Instead, in this one, I'm gonna edit an effect, which is gonna give me the gateway to the Sapphire Effect Builder. Over here at the side, these components actually refer to the majority of Sapphire effects that are available when you purchase Sapphire. The very cool thing is I can stack multiple effects inside of a workspace and be able to see a end result, giving me a very powerful visual effects workflow. Now, some hacks for working inside this window. Number one, we can search for components inside our library. So if we know if the name of something such as Glow, we can find that under the lighting category. And if we double click, it's automatically added to our workspace. Keep in mind that we can add multiple components to our workspace. I'm gonna just type in RGB, where we can see the distort RGB effect, and I'll double click that to also add it to the workspace. When you start to preview your effects and how you've built this up, I recommend turning on preview selected node rather than having this off. In this case, I can see my step-by-step -step process. This is the source or clip that I added from Premiere, the glow effect followed by the distort RGB and the end result. When you have an effect selected, notice its selection parameters come here at the side. Of course, just like in Premiere, I can play with these parameters, but a variable powerful thing here in Sapphire is your pre-built animation curves. To give you an example, I'm gonna click on this little curves editor and click on the second curve I see here. Over time, what's gonna happen is it's gonna go from its original brightness in the shot to the brightness values established here. If I click on here and set a value of five, if I drag this little playhead, it increases in brightness over time. I can take this curve and manipulate the end time by simply dragging on this value. And now I essentially have an animation in value over the beginning of my shot. Obviously it's a little bit too bright, so I can drag that brightness value down to a value of two. Once you start to build effects here inside your workspace, you might want to leave notes. That's easily done from the node menu and inserting a or adding a sticky note. And from here, I can leave a note saying animation on glow and dragging that selected sticky note to the correct area in the workspace. Another thing I can do is choose which parameters I bring over into Premiere Pro under S effect. With my glow selected, I'm going to deselect all of the parameters under that effect and only choose to show someone in Premiere Pro a color and a threshold effect. If I choose OK and later inside of Premiere Pro decide to save this as a preset under this S effect, all they'll see under the glow part of that effect are the two parameters I've chosen to bring over. And you can actually try these for yourself by clicking on the link above to download a free trial of Sapphire. Also follow Boris Effects on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter to stay up to date with the latest information and training materials on Continuum, Sapphire, Mocha Pro, and all the Boris Effects products. I'm Nick Karaz. Thanks for watching.